Hey guys, we're back with another video. It's me again, Ari Head from Electronic First. Welcome to our channel. In our recent Dying Light 2 Worth a Buy episode, I talked about the pros and cons of the game. There's a lot of useful information there, so I suggest you check it out. Dying Light 2 certainly isn't perfect, but it's extremely popular all the same. The game can be quite hard, especially when you don't know the right skills to get early into the game. That's right, today I'll be counting down the top 10 skills to get early on. As you all know, the skill tree is intuitively divided into two sections, combat and parkour. Naturally, the types of XP you earn is also divided. Doing combat-related activities like dropkicking a bandit out of a building or smashing zombie heads nets you combat XP. Likewise, running and jumping around the rooftops of Villador will give you parkour XP. Of course, this is just an example and there are other ways to earn XP. Now, remember this list is only my opinion. For the most part, every skill is quite useful. However, certain skills do overperform though, when used correctly, and can trivialize a lot of the game's content. But before I get into it, be sure to check out our website where we provide the best games at the best prices. Let's take a look at the top 10 skills to get early on in Dying Light 2, shall we? Kicking off at number 10 is the Dash skill. This skill is fairly straightforward. It lets you run faster while expanding your stamina, which is excellent as you won't be using your stamina all the time while you're running. With this, you can put your stamina to good use at the right moment, whether you're running away from a horde of infected, completing a parkour challenge, or just want to move faster around the map. You can't get dash super early on, as you will need 180 stamina and the prerequisite skill Dart. However, Dart is an extremely useful skill. There's little opportunity cost in getting both of them, that's why dash deserves its place at number 10. Number 9, Tic Tac. Dying Light 2 improved the game's parkour system in many entertaining ways. Running horizontally across the wall is one of them. This skill is very satisfying to use, can be essential for parkour challenges, and significantly improve Aiden's mobility in general. It's particularly useful at ground level, where there are walls you can use pretty much everywhere. To acquire this skill, you will need 160 stamina and the high jump skill unlocked. Number 8, Head Stomp. When you see an enemy on the ground, what's the first thing that pops up in your mind? Well, for Aiden, it's to use his freakishly strong legs to jump and literally smash their skull, killing them instantly. Clearly, Aiden isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Or in this case, he doesn't mind staining his feet with the brain juice of his enemy, infected or not. This is easily the most gruesome skill in the game, but it is also equally satisfying. It's also very practical in combat, as grounded enemies still normally require you to waste durability by slashing them several times, especially when you're playing on hard. You'll need the Vault Power Kick and 180 health to acquire this skill though, which might be an issue because the Vault Power Kick isn't a very useful skill. The Vault Power Kick essentially turns your normal Vault Kick into a Drop Kick. The problem here is that you won't be able to stagger enemies with the Power Kick, as opposed to the normal Vault Kick. Number 7, Windmill. It's the dead of night, and the Howler lets out its howl to call upon its infected buddies. You jump around, trying to evade their pursuit, all is well until suddenly you miss a ledge. Aiden falls to the ground and is surrounded by a dozen of infected. There's nowhere to run. Enter Windmill. Aiden swings his weapon in a spin-to-win motion, dealing damage in a large AoE and staggering them in the process. It's also useful against groups of enemies from time to time, especially when they're staggered after using a ground pound, allowing you to damage them all at once. To acquire this skill, you will need 160 health and the power attack unlocked. Number 6, Fast Climb. As its name states, this skill allows Aiden to climb faster. Fast Climb is extremely useful early game, when Aiden has less stamina than a slug. This might be a tiny exaggeration, but suffice to say you will definitely need this skill to reach areas you couldn't reach normally, especially for those secret areas with much appreciated rewards. Also, who even enjoys climbing walls? I sure don't and would much prefer cutting my time climbing them. More drop kicks and less climbing, please. To acquire this skill, you will need 140 stamina points and firm grip unlocked. Number 5, Grapple. Acquiring this skill will allow Aiden to counter his enemies by throwing them to the direction of your choice, staggering them in the process. 
This skill is an excellent alternative to parrying and dodging. It has its own distinct advantages too, performing quite well against certain human bosses. The real kicker here is when you acquire the grapple throw skill. It's not necessary, but it's super useful for throwing enemies out of buildings or just knocking them to the ground, which synergizes with the head stomp skill. Using these two skills in tandem can provide amazing results. To acquire grapple, all you will need is the perfect dodge skill unlocked, an essential skill you'll probably want to get anyway. Number 4. Firm Grip Firm Grip is among the two parkour skills you can get at the beginning, and its usefulness is immediately apparent, as it allows Aiden to jump from a really large distance and still grab a ledge safely. Certainly, an untimely splat is a sad way to go, albeit a very common one in Aiden's case. Yes, I'm speaking from personal experience and definitely don't want you guys in the comment section to criticize my evidently amazing gaming ability. Number 3. Dart Dart gives Aiden a short burst of speed and allows him to jump across much wider gaps than you would normally. This skill is honestly a no-brainer. It lets you run around faster and jump farther, which is essentially what this game is truly about. I would even go so far as to call it an absolute necessity for running away from the infected, as well as parkour challenges. You'll only need 140 stamina and the high jump skill to unlock Dart. At the moment though, Dart is bugged, along with Dash. For whatever reason, you will unlock Dash when you acquire Dart and vice versa. Both skills are very useful though, so this is not necessarily a bad thing. Number 2. Perfect Dodge This skill makes dodging significantly better by forcing opponents into a stagger, if timed correctly. The perfect parry and grapple are amazing for this reason too. However, while certain attacks cannot be parried or grappled, all attacks can be dodged. That's why this skill deserves its spot at number 2. It's the most reliable and is your bread and butter against most enemies in the game. While not quite as satisfying as the alternatives, dodging is more forgiving. For even if you mistime a perfect dodge, you can still easily evade opponents. The best part? You can get the skill after acquiring the Vault Kick, which is at the beginning of your journey. Finally, our number one best skill in Dying Light 2 Stay Human is the almighty Drop Kick. Is anyone actually surprised? I mean, not only is this move flashy, it's also the best combat skill in the game overall. This skill is amazing for engaging in combat. You can use it to launch enemies off of buildings, stagger zombies, and deal a lot of damage without wasting your weapon durability. What's more, the drop kick can be acquired extremely early on as you will only need the air kick skill and 180 health, which should require only one inhibitor upgrade. I recommend getting this before you start any hard fights. It really makes most combat trivial when used correctly. I'd even say it's more overpowered than the drop kick from Dying Light 1. Not to mention, who doesn't love drop kicking? It's probably half the reason we played Dying Light 2. That's it for today's video. Now remember, I might be a little biased here. This is only the opinion I've formed after playing the game for many hours. Other skills definitely could have made it into this list, like the perfect parry and ground pound. One particular skill I didn't include is the active landing. It's incredibly useful, but isn't necessary once you obtain the paraglider, as you could technically just glide before landing on the ground. What do you guys think of our list? Let us know in the comment section below, we really want to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone, and before you go, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on so you never miss a video. This is Arihead from Electronic First, signing out. I'm gonna get back to dropkicking zombies now.